Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with If I Could Choose Only One Work by Composer X, it would have to be work, oh, I don't know, G. Let's do work G, shall we? Composer X is Swiss composer Frank Martin, or Martin, or something. He was a German-French-Swiss guy, so you can pronounce it however you damn well please. I don't know what they did in Switzerland, and I don't care. He was a really good composer. Oh, my goodness, a very, very interesting composer. He was also a vibrato guy, so I love him. Many of his scores are quite detailed in specifying when and where to use extra in your string parts, which tells us a lot about not just performance practice, but how wrong all of the period instrument people are about what happened in the history of orchestral vibrato, but never mind. Never mind. The work in question, Work G. Work G is the Petite Symphony Concertante, one of his acknowledged masterpieces. It's been recorded many times, seldom very well. The best recording is still one of the earliest, Leopold Stokowski's which is just amazing sonically and, well, why is it such a difficult work? Well, it's not so petite, what's in two movements? It's like 25 minutes, 23 minutes, somewhere in there. Um, and it's a 12-tone work, but it's a 12-tone work you can hum. My goodness, how many of those are there? It's actually really very tuneful. It's based on an open, the first movement is on a tune that goes da 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 I mean, Listen, it sounds as good as me humming anything, right? And the second movement, oh, wow, it's got a march. Bum, ba da, bum, 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 ba da, bum, 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 ba da, 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 da. Oh, it's just great. It's catchy. But it's also written for a totally impractical um, instrumental ensemble. It was written for Paul Zacher like so much 20th century music. In fact, someday I have to do a talk on that because if you take um, Elizabeth Sprague Coolidge and the Kusevitsky Foundation and Paul Zacher, um, you basically get all of 20th century music, commissions by the Boston Symphony, you know, that kind of stuff. It's phenomenal um, how much you can summarize um, based on those, those particular groups. In fact, Paul Zacher was the great um, European work commissioner guy because most of the others, believe it or not, were American. It's really fascinating. I mean, there's a talk there, but okay. So what, why is this such a difficult work? Well, it's written for double string orchestra and then harp, harpsichord, and piano. And balancing a harp, a harpsichord, and the piano against the double string, or string orchestra is a real problem. It's a real problem on recordings. Stokowski, of course, could do it. He was a genius. But so many of these recordings somehow come out not sounding the way they're supposed to. In fact, it was so difficult to do and to get an ensemble together that could actually do it. I mean, Martin loved the harpsichord. You know, he wrote a wonderful harpsichord concerto. That's also hummable. Da 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 dum ba da 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 dum ba da 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 dum ba da dum ba da. Oh, it's just great. Anyway, uh, you know, he he actually arranged it for full symphony orchestra, big orchestra, uh, and it's been recorded too. It's on Chandos. It's really, really not as good as the original. It's interesting to hear. The music is so wonderful. You could do it either way, but there's something about that sonority of the strings opposed to the harp going whong, you know, and harpsichord going clangity, 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 clang, and the piano, doing the piano thing. It's just marvelous. And the fact that none of these things really balance out anything else, well, you know, that's just the way it is. We have to live with it. But it is a fabulous exemplar of his work to give to the evil god Cancrazans. And actually, there are so many other pieces of his that deserve to be known, but that aren't. I mean, there's the concerto for, you know, seven wind instruments, timpani and percussion and strings or whatever that thing is. And then there, there are the ballads for all the various instruments and the Maria Triptychon. And oh, it's really, really just a fantastic, fantastic legacy. His Requiem, the opera, The Tempest, which is on Hyperion, really, really fine stuff. And we deserve to be able to hear it all. And I think the Petite Symphony Concertante is so fascinating, so temporally intriguing, 
so titillating to the ear that the evil god would never want us to lose anything else that this man may have written. And frankly, uh, you guys who don't know him and who are afraid of 20th century music and all that stuff, you really should hear this piece. It's so captivating. It really is just a just work of genius. Absolutely marvelous. And Stokowski's is the recording to get. It's in his icon box. It's on Warner EMI. If you can get it, I'm sure you can download it. Um, it was coupled with a, a, the William Steinberg, um, I think Hindemith, Matt Dister, Mahler or something like that, a really dreadful remastering originally, but that, that's been cleaned up since then, I think. Anyway, uh, yeah, go for Frank Martin, 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 Martun, whatever you want to call him. Listen to the Petite Symphony Concertante and keep on listening. Thanks for joining me, friends. Take care. <laughs>